Hey guys, welcome back to another Fly Tying Tuesday with Avid Max. My name is Max, and today we're going to be tying the Mini Snack Attack. So in the vise, we got a A-Rex TP610. It's the Trout Predator. Uh, this is the size 2. Typically, I think this fly is tied in the one knot size, but I'm kind of tying it in a little bit smaller size uh, to be more accommodating to trout here in the Rocky Mountains. So, got some 100 uh, nano silk. This is just in the white. Uh, we're just going to lay down a little bit of thread. Make a nice kind of spot to tie in some dumbbell eyes here. And today we're just going to do some white. I think uh, typically tied with the pupiled uh, dumbbell eyes, but uh, I think the fish won't be too critical of whether or not you have two circles instead of one. Lay it down just a little bit of zap. And tie these dumbbell eyes right onto the top. And I want to make sure that I leave a little bit of room. Scoot back just a little more. And then secure those down. Just makes it a little easier tying off the fly. There's that. Um, and we're going to flip the fly over. And the uh, idea is that hook point's going to ride up, kind of like your jig hooks. So we're going to do this one in kind of the crawfish colors. So we got the barred craw, rabbit strip, uh, nice orange uh, mixed with some brown and some gold. Kind of the rabbit hide, the length of the body. I'll part my fur and I'll wet my fingers a little bit. Nice clean spot to puncture the hide with my hook point. And and then I'm going to take the hook out of the vise for just a second. Slide that down and put it right back in. Pull everything kind of back out of the way. And we'll come back to that in just a minute. So, should be a fairly quick tie. You can knock out quite a few. Now we're going to go for some ice dub in the gold and we're going to do a dubbing loop. So I think we want to create a lot of kind of like bulk with this. And now we'll make our loop. So I'm gonna make a little bit bigger loop here. And then we'll go around the thread a couple times and pull it back just a little bit. So come on. Double loop tool, my dub, slide that in there, remove my tweezers, then I can kind of center it and spread it out. So, start spinning her up, make sure everything rabbit wise stays out of there. Take my bodkin, pluck out the ice stub, and pull out some of those stragglers, a couple more spins, and then start wrapping around the shank, working towards the dumbbell eyes. Same thing, bodkin kind of in action, kind of plucking those out as we make our turns, trying to make sure everything's coming back the same direction. Close wraps.
finish wrapping right up to our dumbbell eyes and secure our loop. A couple wraps in front and behind. And then I can snip out my thread on my dub and loop. Little material brush. Good. Pull everything back and make myself just a little bit of room here. I'm going to take my rabbit hide and just like we did before, we're going to kind of measure it out. And make a tie-in point for our thread. A couple of tight wraps, secure things down. And more real tight pull. And then I like to go one wrap with the rabbit. And we'll capture that rabbit. Still working everything behind the dumbbell eyes. And snip out my rabbit hide. Pull everything back again. And so you can see nice transition color. Uh, now we can move to our rubber legs. And this is a real cool color gold and pumpkin. This is just the standard size. There's also a nymph size if you were gonna, you know, tie even smaller. Grab two of those. And have that rubber leg on my thread. And wanna make sure you don't pull too hard and we just get them to lay in there. If you pull too hard, they'll kind of come forward to the eyes and we don't want them laying back. So, the one closest to me, get this side tied in. That other side secured with our rubber legs and a little hair clip is always a nice tool to have on the bench. Pull everything back out of the way. Now we're gonna do our head and we're gonna be doing some bruiser blend. This is uh, the hidden treasure and then a brown. Uh, darker color is gonna be on top, uh, which is the brown. And then the hidden treasure, throw underneath. And just like you've seen before, I'm gonna pull some of that out. And I think if you were tying in that one knot size, uh, you'd probably wanna go with the standard bruiser blend uh, instead of the junior. I think kinda like that size one transition to the two is where you really wanna use the junior versus the, the standard. So lay that down right on top, a couple of wraps to secure that in, and then we'll go with the hidden treasure on the bottom side. Securing wraps, pull with a little bit of tension, and, and I can get everything 
going back out of the way. And I'll bring my thread to the front of the eyes. I like to make a wrap kind of behind the eyes when I do that so that it brings my thread very close to the dumbbell eyes. Because if I were to just wrap in front, then you know, it's tough to get kind of like back into that gap. So kind of making a wrap around each side of the eye kind of pulls that thread back. And I'll make that transition from this patch of the bruiser blend to the next patch really transition into one piece of the head. Another patch of bruiser blend in the brown. Brown's a cool color. It's got some, you know, purple, purple strands of like an ice dub or some kind of flash in there. Pull that back. Tie that in. Keep that right on top. And we got our hidden treasure here. They oriented correctly. The dark on the top, light on the bottom. Then I'm gonna pull them back together and make some tight securing wraps right in front. There's that. We'll do a little bit of zappy gap. Pull everything back. And we'll do a quick whip finish. And we'll just comb out our head a little bit and Finish the fly up. So now we got another dubbing brush. I'm gonna pull out the head of this a little bit. I'm gonna trim out our legs. To just about the length of that dubbing poking out the backside, and can comb everything back. And taking it out of the vise can make it a little bit easier to finish your finish your head. So comb out that bottom side and top side just a little bit more. There you have it. Snack attack. Um, whether you're deciding to fish it for smallmouth, uh, for trout, uh, the snack attack is a great little uh, fly. Uh, could be a good sculpting pattern. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Of course, give us a like if you did like the video. And uh, go to avidmax.com for all the necessary materials to tie this fly.